April 2016, NASA's pioneering New Horizons probe reaches the Kuiper Belt, a dark, distant region of space at the edge of our solar system. As the New Horizons probe moves beyond its first target, Pluto, its sensors capture a large object on a mysterious trajectory. Scientists give it an ominous name, Arawan. Arawan is named after the Celtic god of death, war, terror, revenge. Not a pleasant person, as you can well imagine. Whatever Arwan is, it's behaving strangely. It seems illuminated, but then it goes dark. It lights up and darkens in a precise rhythm. Scientists realize that this object is rotating. If it's spinning once every five and a half hours, that means the front edge is like 50 miles an hour. So that's like something the size of the state of Delaware completing a full spin in about a quarter of a day. Scientists expect the Kuiper Belt to be filled with objects made of rock and ice. But Arwan's spin suggests it is made of something else. Arwan is spinning so fast that the centrifugal force could actually tear it apart. Is it made of something stronger than rock and ice. New Horizons moves in so its sensors can get a closer look. Whatever Arwan is, we're about to find out. But at the crucial moment, the probe circuits suddenly, inexplicably go dead. All of a sudden, transmission was cut off. This suggests that someone is monitoring our very presence. When you're a mission operator, it's really one of the last things that you want to see. You're very concerned that there could be something seriously wrong with your spacecraft, and it's jeopardizing the mission. It does beg the question, is someone or something trying to jam NASA's signal? Before contact is lost, scientists see that Arwan is spinning in a manner consistent with a large spaceship. It's spinning as fast as it is, as though it's creating artificial gravity. Spinning creates an artificial gravity environment within the hollow center of the object, like an inverted planet, with the surface on the inside rather than the outside. NASA recognizes that long-haul space travel will only be possible if we can somehow replicate gravity. This is not only good to keep you healthy because our body's used to gravity, but also it's just much easier to get things done than if you're not floating around the room. Analysts compare the mystery object called R1 with NASA's attempts at recreating gravity in space. These two were based on the concept of a spinning ship. Engineers, scientists looked at concepts for artificial gravity, gigantic structures in space, spinning around, where on the outer edges you had forests, you had cities, um, you had places where people could live. In the 1960s, NASA begins ground-based experiments on artificial gravity, building a huge research facility at Langley. Its centerpiece is a space station-scale spinning rig designed for human guinea pigs. They would suspend a test subject sideways, spin the wheel, it's about 40 foot in diameter, have them stand on the inner parts there, and as it went nine revolutions a minute, it was about half of Earth's gravity. That must have been the weirdest experience. It's like a fairground ride on steroids. I would never get on this thing. Neither NASA nor any other space agency is anywhere near building a spinning spacecraft on the scale of R1. What's more, whatever kind of creature might be inside R1, it's unlikely that they're anything like us. May 2016, NASA scientists detect a large, mysterious object beyond our solar system. It's one of NASA's jobs to help defend Earth from cosmic threats. But if this thing is what some scientists fear, there can be no defense. It could literally be the end of the world. NASA calls the big guns on this one with the Hubble Space Telescope and the Chandra X-ray Observatory. The object is so dark, it's almost undetectable. But the readings that do come back point to one terrifying conclusion. It's a black hole, but it's not like any black hole we've seen before. 
It's a hidden star killer just lurking out there in space, totally under the radar. And this planet destroyer could be on the move and headed in our direction. Super powerful, super scary black holes are huge, dense masses of matter that deform space time. Normally, they are more easily detected. The gravity is exceptionally strong, so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. Anything that falls in this thing is gone forever. What allows us to see black holes is that as other objects come close to black holes, they get torn apart and they form a disk around the black hole called an accretion disk. And that gives off the strong X-ray signature that normally tells us, boom, that's a black hole. Black holes are powerful beyond anything humans can imagine. And disturbingly, this one, barely detectable, is sitting in our own galaxy, slowly eating its way through nearby solar systems. What we have here is a black hole that is eating another star and generating x-rays, but it's savoring its companion star. It's slowly eating it and only giving off the weak signature that suggests there could be a lot more out there that we're not aware of. Finding this black hole that's so stealthy was kind of a fluke. Worryingly, there may be many other undiscovered black holes sitting closer to Earth than previously thought. Worse still, black holes are able to move at tremendous speeds, hurtling through space at a mind-bending five million miles an hour. It's possible that there's a black hole moving toward us in space right now, and until it starts affecting you gravitationally, you won't know that it's there. If and when we are attacked by a black hole, there will be little warning. Astronomers have calculated that we would not detect its presence outside our solar system until it was just 800 days away from us. Scientists are racing to plan defenses against death by asteroid. The first solution is the same thing you may have seen in movies, nuke it. But the most a nuke would likely do is fracture the asteroid into several no less deadly pieces. The scale of these objects and the speed at which they're traveling is so large that a nuclear bomb probably wouldn't stop them anyway. It's gonna be like a gnat hitting a jumbo jet. It's not gonna be enough. But maybe you could nudge it out of the way, same way that you might hit one ball against another one in a game of pool. NASA is investigating whether it's possible to nudge these planet killers out of the way. Well, we've actually hit an object in space before, in 2005. NASA launched a mission called Deep Impact. Deep Impact's mission was to fire an 820-pound copper core into the Temple One comet to bring material up from beneath its surface for analysis. Now that copper was traveling at 23,000 miles per hour, and when it impacted that comet, it moved it just a little bit. Even a tiny change in direction over hundreds of thousands of miles could be enough to cause an asteroid to miss the Earth. If you can move its orbit just a little bit, and if you do it early enough, by the time it gets to where Earth is, it misses us entirely. If we can catch Earth-bound asteroids early enough, and if we hit them hard, we may be able to deflect them. NASA is already working on such an asteroid deflection defense system. Didymos B will be passing close by the Earth in 2022, and NASA's DART mission is going to intercept it. It's a bit like playing pool in space, except if you make the right shot, the prize is our survival. But NASA's mission to Didymos is still three years away and has no guarantee of success. In the meantime, the number of space rocks headed our way seems to be growing fast. We may soon be facing a blitzkrieg of Earth-shattering asteroids. August 2017. Tech billionaire Yuri Milner spends $100 million of his fortune searching for alien signals in space. Today, he strikes gold. His Breakthrough Listen project detects 15 strange signals coming from the Auriga star system. It's basically like a beacon of radio energy rippling outwards across the universe, kind of like a stone makes ripples in a pond. The signals stand out as distinctly artificial. It repeats. 
over and over. And that's exactly the sort of thing that we would look for in a signal from ET. Now scientists face a massive challenge. If this is a message, what does it mean? And how can we possibly decipher an alien code? Science fiction makes it look easy. We're from Mars. Don't be afraid. On TV, you know, the aliens always speak idiomatic English. I'm usually better than the English spoken by my relatives, right? But in, in reality, that's not likely to be the case. They're not going to speak English. Whatever message may be hidden in the mysterious radio signal will be much harder to decipher than any human language. We have to be prepared when we intercept alien languages, not just an alien version of English, but a totally different dimension of sound, sights, smells, colors that aliens may use. NASA has poured millions into researching the ways animals receive and relay information as a first step towards trying to understand how aliens might communicate. Even on the planet Earth, animals communicate in a much different way than we communicate. Take a bat, for example. If you could somehow breed a bat that becomes intelligent, they would talk to you with sonar. If you were to talk to a race of birds, they would communicate with melodies or take a dog. Dogs think in terms of smells. Thousands of smells drifting in and out of their consciousness. That's how they would communicate. The space agency's largest investment has been in an attempt to communicate with dolphins, the nearest thing we have on Earth to intelligent aliens. They aren't terrestrial. They don't live on the land. These are aquatic creatures, but they're incredibly intelligent. Three dolphins, including a particularly clever one called Peter, are brought to a specially built submerged laboratory in the Caribbean. Perhaps someday we'll understand what they're saying. There was such a feeling of optimism that the scientists dubbed themselves the Order of the Dolphin. They believe that dolphins could one day take a seat in the UN and represent their entire species to the world and even make a contribution to world affairs. But after three years of hard work, it all comes to nothing. By putting his mouth halfway out of the water, Peter did learn to say something that sounded like, hello, Margaret. Whether Peter really knew what that meant or not, we don't know. The team run up against a fundamental problem of cross-species communication, which makes cracking newly received alien code seem almost impossible. They're never gonna be able to speak good English or any other language. That's just not part of their brain structure. If in the end we can't speak with dolphins, who are biologically very similar, what's the chance we're gonna be able to speak with aliens from a different civilization? 